And hello everybody. This is a short video about how to complete a certain section of the Kimian Strand analysis that we had not gotten to in the class, but you need for at least the first question in uh, the quiz, first quiz. Uh, when we jumped back into this, this week four, this past Wednesday, when we jumped back into it, um, I realized that there was just a few columns that we had not uh, finished here under the profitability. So this is essentially the same file that you have been building, okay? And all I've done so far is uh, labeled the left-hand side as a contract profitability forecast. So the left-hand side, contract by contract, we're trying to figure out what the profitability is, but we didn't get there yet, okay? I'd left that off at the week three ending of the class meeting, and uh, we moved into the schedule forecast, which is on the right side of our analysis here, and for which we found a big problem that you're going to have to do, sleuth out the, uh, the source of the problem to, because we were given eight weeks for the t-shirts, and we calculated the forecast out by the way that the student manual reads. Uh, we had that read out as over 12 weeks. So how did we ever get that done on time? Or did we get that on time? Because now you should be very curious that this is all your responsibility as far as uh, sort of a, an ownership approach to the problem for the executive management at KNS. You've got to figure that out. All right. Even though it went in our favor, we still have to understand it because we need to use that to our advantage. Okay. So what I'm going to go over here has everything to do with finishing off the profitability forecast part. And there were a couple columns that we didn't finish here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, for the momentarily, I'm going to erase um, or unfill. I'm going to put no fill in this column, which we had used as a like a visual barrier or a visual boundary rather between uh, the profitability and the scheduling, okay? If I don't get rid of that, it's gonna give me a little brief with formatting here. So I'm, I'm gonna go back and put that in. But what we need to do here, okay, let's bring ourselves up to speed with the end of week three. We had figured out which of the three, which of the expenses we were going to actually track. We're gonna take a stab at a compromise here and ignore some expenses. The ones that we ended up with to track were raw materials, cycle costs, and shipping. OK, and for those, we actually calculated the dollar value and what the percentage of the contract value would be. OK, so what, what is the contribution of cost of materials on T-shirts for, for this contract? And it was 5 percent. OK. All right. OK, so what we didn't do is we did not add these up. Well, what we are after is the profitability or profit. And we didn't do that. OK, so what we're going to do is think of this as uh, we'll have three. OK, I'm going to set something up here. You can follow me in doing this. I am going to set up I'm going to click here where it says T-shirts on that cell. And I am going to do something. Freeze panes. OK, so now what I've done in Excel is I've frozen the first column and the top. What is where that is four lines will not move when I scroll. OK, so we hadn't done that in the class. You might want to do that. Okay, so now when you scroll, I can see my index over here on the left doesn't go away. All right. And that way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this with a pretty loud, I'm going to soft yellow here. Okay, so I have to go back to the home and we have to do some formatting off the home menu item. And I'm going to flood that with, and I'm going to go to more colors and I'm going to pick uh, a mild yellow in that. Okay, because it's a subtotal. I'm going to use a softer yellow. By the end, we're going to use the very vivid yellow here, gold, but that's usually for like a total sum column. Okay. So what I did was just paint. What I did was for the raw materials, I'm drawing attention to the number that we were really after. There was some pre-calculations, primitive here, like primitive calculations, but our subtotal um, is something that my, I want to paint here in yellow. So my eye is drawn to it. So it's pure aesthetics. It's nothing more than that not really functional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two lines. I'm going to control C. I'm going to copy just the yellow part of that. Okay. Because we want to do the same thing for cycle costs. All right. And we're going to, we want to paint uh, the, the cost for the contract and the percentage of the cost of uh, on the contract from cycle costs. All right. So all I need to do is click once in here, but I'm going to write, I'm going to paste special is basically what we're doing. I'm going to right click on it. And under paste special options here, you can pick different things. And it seems to have, okay, let's 
jumping around a little bit on me. Let me get this here. I'm going to have to do that again. Control C. All I want to do is copy yellow, not the other parts of it. So I click here and I right click and I paste special with the little paintbrush here. And that means just paint, just paint the um, formatting into that. Notice the numbers didn't change, but now that's pale yellow. And we're going to do the same thing for the subtotal areas of shipping. Right click that, paint it. Okay, so all I'm doing is really painting. Okay, so if you remember, uh, we did have an equation in here I had to do very quickly in class because that in week four I realized that we hadn't completed this out. I'm just going to delete that. What we had, what I had done was I'd figured out what the profitability on the t-shirts was at the gross profit level. Okay, so we were subtracting out direct costs that could be directly attributable to uh, raw materials, to the cycle costs, and to shipping, which will fall under gross profits. Okay, so we've painted that up a little bit. I'm going to delete my cell here because now we're going to go back and do a, a proper job of it. Because what we need to do here is we're going to put in the, the total, so there's going to be a dollar figure, the, to, the total contract cost here. That's the total contract cost. Okay, and we're going to do something similar to it next to it. And we're going to do the percentage of what's the impact of all these costs. What's the total on the costs here? Okay, now that's not profitability, correct? Right, we haven't gotten there yet. Insert. So I need a couple more columns here, at least three more columns. There's one, and if I hit Control Y, it'll do it again. And if I hit Control Y, it'll do it again. I needed three columns. Okay, and now I can safely go back and paint my visible boundary here, like we used to have right here. Okay, so we're going to paint that with some dark blue I think we picked. I'm going to pick very dark blue this time. Okay, so there we go. All right, so that's just a visual separator between the profitability and schedule sides. And I've put in all the columns that I need. I know that I have, that I have there. Okay, so let's add up. What is the total cost here is just going to be equal to, i um, going to get them in the right order here. All right, I'm going to put them in an order. It doesn't really make, make a difference, but it's good to keep a convention going here. Okay, so I'm going to add the raw materials plus the cycle costs, which is here, plus cost of shipping, which is here. Hit enter. Okay, so those are our total costs, right? And what is the impact of that over the contract value? So I have to scooch back over here, go grab this contract value. I believe in my case, Keeping to the convention that I had used, I was using the calculated. I always use the calculated. It doesn't really matter if you use the given, but it's good to keep a convention so you don't get your Excel messed up. Okay, so I'm going to format. I like the format of the total costs here. Uh, for the percentage here, I am going to format all of that. I'm kind of checking this out. I think I'm on the right line there. Yeah, I think I'm on the right line. And I'm going to convert that to a percentage number. And I'm going to bump the uh, number of uh, decimal points up. Let's, like, let's go to one. I guess we use two in other places. So we'll put two places there. Okay. So, so at this point, we have the total costs. And now we can get to the actual profitability number, okay? Because I'm going to go back over here and just remember, what was the cell that had the calculated contract value was J5? I don't want to have to go left, you know, scroll over to the left to go get that again. So I'm just going to remember that it was um, control seeing that. J5, I'm going to need in calculating the profit, okay? So we're going to take... Um, We're going to take the total costs, but we're going to take the contract value and subtract it. So that was J5 minus our costs, right? That's going to show us what's left over after gross margin. Now, if you remember the number I just got out of here was 5,135. I did a really quick calculation during class week four. All right. So now what we want to do is say dollar wise, as far as gross profits go, we're at over $5,000 on a $7,200 contract, which is not bad. Right, but we haven't taken all those other overhead expenses, everything else taken out. 
interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, things like that also, right? So let's do I'll put it in here. I'll write it in as margin in dollars. Our margin is 5,135. And now we're going to do the, the relative size or the relative margin on here is going to be, I'll type in here. What I'm do is I'm going to grab that cell. I'm just going to dra drag it to the right. I'm going to get myself another version of, you know, another copy of that there. But I, I'm going to change it and edit it because we want to look at the percent margin on this. So the percent margin is going to be equal to the amount that we're holding that we have in our pocket after direct costs are taken out over J5. Use that again. Okay. So while we're here, I, I like the format that looks like it's in, in a, an accounting format for the dollars here that we have, but I'm going to change this back to percentage, bump up the decimal places. So we, we, hold on to 71.32% of the value of the contract after those three direct costs are taken out. Just as a note, remember what we're, one big one we're not accounting for here is payroll. Okay. So the labor or payroll on this, we're not including. Okay. So keep it in mind, your business people, we're just keeping in mind that, that we can be uh, thinking about applying those payroll costs to the contracts, uh, allocating out the costs back to the contracts again. Okay. All right, so now that we have those, that is actually where I wanted to get to here. There's a little bit of colorization I wanted to fix here. Uh, we were marching along with this blue, uh, so I'm going to fill that with a darker blue. There's a darker blue there, and usually when it gets to that dark with black text, what we're going to do, the cells are still selected, and I'm going to just gonna invert that to white, white text. And uh, when you do the inversion, you usually have to throw a bold on there because it gets a little washed out. Okay, so I just inverted uh, the text color from black to white, and here is where, okay, so here in these columns, we're going to apply a little darker color yellow. This is all aesthetics, you know, not functional. Okay, so there's the yellow that we already used. We're going to go get the next darker yellow. Actually, I'm going to get one too, too darker than that, or else you're not going to really perceive it. Okay, so I painted that a little bit darker. We're getting toward the totals at the end. So this is a, a run up of the subtotals. So this is a subtotal of the subtotals. And then I'll paint this one quite vivid gold. I'm not even sure if you'd call it yellow, which is the darkest yellow of all those really. Now that now your eyes can follow this. You could find maybe your own way to do this that appeals to you. Your company would have its own way, but have some standards or whatever, but we're done. Okay, this is where I wanted to get to. Let's check how much time it took me to get there. Well, 13 minutes was well over what I wanted to use for this. But you need to do these steps, and then you'll be in good shape to finish off the rest of the quiz. So you just follow what I did here. You should end up with these numbers, and you should be just fine.